Hey, it's John, and welcome back to my travel channel. Today, we are in, well, we're back in Bethlehem, in particular, the historic Moravian district. We're going to be exploring the Christmas city, a few of the village shops, as well as the historic landmarks, and even a Christmas tree tour. Now, before we start our journey, don't forget to like and subscribe, as it really helps us build content that you enjoy. Now, our first stop here is the Sun Inn which was famous back in the 1700s that hosted George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, and Ben Franklin. Now, today they do have a restaurant, little mini museum, and they do serve some spirits there. So follow me this way as we start our journey. One of probably the most iconic things to do to explore Bethlehem is through a carriage ride. Now, in my opinion, they're a little expensive, but a lot of people like to do that. Also, you can take a trolley ride from historic downtown Bethlehem to the Chris Kindle Mart if you want to check out the Christmas market and Bethlehem at the same time. Now, if you haven't checked out our tour of Chris Kindle Mart last year, definitely check that out as well. One of the best things to see off the beaten path in Bethlehem is a Christmas tree tour. You get to see some of the historic sites and all the trees are decorated in the theme of different games or childhood games. And obviously each tree has a different game uh, decoration to it. So we're going to go take a look at it. So follow me this way as we go see the Christmas trees. Trivia, the first ever jigsaw puzzle was made in the 1760s by a London map, map maker named John Spilsbury, who took one of his maps, cut all the countries into individual pieces, and marketed it as a tool to teach children geography. Early puzzles were called dissected puzzles. Sounds pretty disgusting, doesn't it? That's what she put it, right? <laughs> the, the term jigsaw puzzle came after the invention of the jigsaw in the 1880s when puzzles could be cut with interlocking pieces like we have today. Dominoes are played all over the world, but they are the most popular in Latin America, especially in Cuba and the Dominican Republic. The game inspired the popular pizza chain, which uses a domino in their logo, which is, I can't imagine why. Playing dominoes with younger children help, helps develop their math skills. That's the domino tree. Uh, this is the, the first Christmas tree known, as far as we know, research indicates. And it's called the Tannenbaum or the Pyramid Tree. And this is the only, every Christmas uh, season, Thanksgiving, holiday, Christmas season we have here, this is the only constant, consistent uh, display that we have here. So that was the first one. And I believe it originated in Germany in the 1700s, sometime during the 1700s. I don't really know when. As part of the Christmas tree tour, you stop at the Kemmer Museum, which has the most Christmas trees inside. So it's definitely worth checking out. And all these trees we found out were decorated by the Garden Club, and you can vote for which one's your favorite. So I don't know which one I'm voting for quite yet. So why don't we see a couple more Christmas trees, and maybe you can decide and put it in the comments below of which one's your favorite. 
I'll tell you what, I, I really like the checkers just because of, you know, the kind of the contrast and it's one of my favorite games growing up. Classic tic-tac-toe, which if you played it enough, you know there's no way to win. Are you going to beat me in tic-tac-toe? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. What it lacks in width and makes up for in presence and different colors. All right, it is time to make some big decisions on the vote of our favorite trees, or tree. And I'm voting for the Candyland tree as well as the Checkers tree. So, then cast our vote, cross our fingers that one of those trees wins. Hopefully we beat out that Twister tree. <laughs> One of the must-do things in Bethlehem is seeing the puts, and it's famous because it's been around for like 82 years, and it's run by the Moravian Church, and it's just really beautiful to see. It's a huge nativity scene, all hand-carved, but still very cool, and really cool to see the historic aspect of it. And we're exploring the puts right by the Bethlehem Museum, and I mean, it's just amazing. They have a little town but i it's crazy how much artwork goes into it <laughs> Looks like they even set up a Putz Kindle Mart, which if you've seen our last video last year, we were at the Chris Kindle Mart, which is in a separate section of Bethlehem. And it's a fun little Christmas market. The Hotel Bethlehem is such an iconic historic landmark. It's a must-see on everyone's list. Even dates back to the 1700s when it was called the Golden Eagle Hotel. And it's hosted celebrities, actors, presidents. Um, so it's such a huge popular landmark. Now during the Christmas season, it gets a little busy. And it's supposed to have spectacular food and beautiful Christmas decorations. But due to an event, unfortunately, we can't go in. So if you plan on coming to the Hotel Bethlehem during the Christmas season, don't forget to book in advance. But there are a lot of other places in Bethlehem that we can check out. So let's go see what else the city has to offer.
We are in the Moravian Bookstore, which is the oldest bookstore in America. And of course, you can buy different Christmas items. And the most famous item you can purchase is a Moravian star. Traditionally, it's 26 points, but you can get a star that ranges from 6 to 100 different points. Um, it originated in Saxony, Germany, but it's a huge icon of Bethlehem. I mean, you see shops and different windows that have the star, so it's definitely a huge thing in this area to purchase. So maybe we'll pick up our own star. The Christmas City was so magical. I think the Christmas tree tour was my personal favorite. Uh, it's definitely worth doing the, the stops in multiple places to see the different trees and the toy theme was just amazing. But don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps us build our content and find out you know, what type of videos you would like to see. Until next time though, keep on exploring.